All right, we're live. How are you doing, everyone? Good to see people in the live chat and stuff already. So really excited today to have today's guest on. He's got quite the reputation in the German-speaking world. It's Firoz Khan, and uh, he's also brushed up on his English recently. So I think, <laughs> Firoz, would I be right in saying this will be the first stream you've ever done in English? Um, let me think about it. Mm. No, yeah, it's the first live streaming on English. Yeah. But I had the pleasure to meet uh, the manager of Donald Trump, uh, right. and we had we had an um, encounter. We had a uh, uh, conversation on English, but it was it wasn't live. But yeah. yeah, okay, this is groundbreaking. Then this is revolutionary. Who would have sure. thought that Ferris Khan would be <laughs> speaking in English for the first time live on the Carnage and Debunk channel? I am blessed. So, um, Ferris, tell us. Um, Tell us about yourself, who you are for people who are unfamiliar with you and what you're known for in Germany. Yeah, um, my name is Feroz Khan. I, I'm born in Frankfurt um, and I'm born as a Muslim. And uh, 2015, I decided uh, for me the personal choice to uh, leave the Islam. Um, since then, I got uh, really critical on, uh, on, the, on the Islam. Then I moved uh, from my master studies from um, Frankfurt to Dresden and Dresden uh, really got me uh, political it uh, inspired me on on the political sphere uh, it, until that point I was I was always uh, philosophical you know I always think about life and and religion that's why I um, question my own religion and um, get to uh, leave it and in Dresden I um, decided to um, yeah to launch the channel on YouTube after I got a, um, a really famous um, yeah, spot on a, a public channel in uh, Germany and um, had, the, had the opportunity to um, get my, yeah, my message on, on the ongoings in Germany, what uh, leads to migration and all the politics between left and right. And since then, 2016, I'm, I'm a political YouTuber and... Um, yeah, the, the vegan content, the vegan topic just uh, joined about two years ago, one and a half years ago. Yeah. Yeah, we'll get into that in a second, because this is, from what I gather, quite the crazy turnaround. Because from what I know about you from other people in the German activism scene, in the, in the Austrian activism scene, you were quite the anti-vegan back in the day. So that that will be something interesting to get into. I'm looking forward to hearing your story. Um well, George, just just to just don't wanna be rude, but um I would I wouldn't consider me myself as an anti-vegan before, yeah. but I was a skeptic about it. And I yeah. I, I wasn't vegan, you know. Uh, as long as I'm not vegan, I'm against animals. So you could say I was anti-animals, but I wasn't uh, against the uh, vegan idea. But I was questioning about it. And um, yeah, the, uh, there was a there was a debate between uh, Rafaela and a co colleague of mine, yeah. and it was live, and this got me thinking about it. So this would be my journey to veganism. Right, interesting. Yeah, well, we'll get into that in a bit. One thing um, I wanted to pick up on from your intro just then, you mentioned about your um, Muslim background. What, what's your ethnic background? Where are your family from? My parents come from, come from Pakistan. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, and are they still a Muslim family now? Yeah. And how did they deal with you becoming an ex-Muslim? Uh, it was a personal topic. It was not a um, political topic, but it was personal. So um, we had a tough time in, in the first, but yeah. uh, we managed to get uh, along with that after, yeah, some, some, uh, some, yeah, as I mentioned, tough times. And, um, yeah. but after, Almost a year, we uh, find a solution to live together and uh, tolerate each other. Yeah. Do, do you think one of your um, kind of um, turning points in maybe in your life politically? I don't know what your views have always been, but do you think kind of like the way that the left cozies up? to islam and sweeps things under the carpet like islamic oppression and stuff under the carpet yeah. do you think that kind of inspired you as an ex-muslim to be particularly anti-left um 
it was it was uh, the, the the first questions because you you get to notice a, li a, a lot of uh, bigotry and uh, hypocrisy uh, on, on that topic you know if you match um, the mass migration with the with the original um, thinking and original ideas of leftists so um, the, it, it uh, has been sure um, a reason why I uh, get skeptical about uh, the mainstream because I don't know what's the situation in UK you're from UK right Yes. Um, I hope I didn't. Uh, I didn't um, dox you. No, you haven't doxed me. Yeah. I'm from. I'm. Uh, everyone knows I'm from the it's, UK. It's public. <laughs> okay. okay. And my my accent is very English as well, so everyone knows that I'm British. But, but it's no not British one. English. It absolutely is. It could be. It could be a little bit more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, we have a lot of regional accents here in England. So oh, I'm okay, from okay. the southeast England. So um, south yeah, I don't east. So okay. Yeah, so I don't sound, um, I don't have like the exact like Harry Potter voice, but I'm <laughs> from like, that kind of area. Um, so it's like a little uh, more regional maybe than that. You, know, you know the movie, This Is England? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you, you know the guy, you know the, the little boy comes into the, um, into the uh, um, liquor store and it says, uh, get me a hundred facts. Oh, he's a wine. Yeah, I think he's a scouser, Liverpool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He says, uh, give me a hundred facts, a uh, yeah. bottle of wine, two bottles of whiskey, and 10 cans of lager now. Yeah, yeah. This, that, is, this is British yeah. English. That's how they speak up in Liverpool. That's how they sound. Uh, yeah, they go, yeah, exactly, exactly. And, you know, the other, the other thing they do, they make that sound. So they yeah, go, yeah, yeah. I'm going down the path. Po I'm for for sake. For fuck fuck sake. sake, mate, yeah. I've got to drink a, a can of lager. Yeah, that's how they sound in Liverpool. I, I don't have that accent. I definitely don't have gotcha, that accent. Gotcha. I'm from different part of the country. Very, like, okay. different. Yeah. Back um, to topic. Back to topic. Yes, um, yes carry on. Yeah, it may, 100%. Uh, Islam was the first, uh, the very first uh, eye-opener. But uh, mm -hmm. the main eye-opener of us was when I um, moved from uh, uh, West Germany to uh, East Germany. And I saw... The reality, because uh, this was the time the media starts to um, publish about the East Germany being racist, being fascist, being Nazis and stuff like that. And right. uh, as I um, catch myself witnessing it, it um, in the first place on my own, I just uh, noticed I just have to realize that they're they're lying about that. And that's not uh, that's not a correct way. That's not a, a responsible way to make um especially uh, public financial uh, f financed um, uh, journalism. So mm -hmm. this was my waking up call in um, 20, 2016, 2015 back then. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I guess it's particularly brave that you're an ex-Muslim because the, the repercussions for leaving Islam can often be deadly or for critiquing sure. Islam. We've exactly. seen this in, in Europe. I, I assume you, you know of like Ayan Hirsi Ali and stuff sure. in the Netherlands. And sure. You heard about like the Theo van Gogh uh, being murdered and yeah, um, yeah. stuff like that. Ha have you had any fears for your personal safety since leaving Islam? Mm, not from my family or my uh, personal background, my social environment. But um, after I start to criticize it online publicly on my YouTube channel, and um, I always had the uh, theological um, way, you know, I I'm, I'm, I get to um, um, learn m much about the Quran, and uh, so I I could talk about it also yeah. on my YouTube channel, and um, yeah, you know, that's common that you get uh, comments and you get uh, DMs and um, maybe also threatenings. So uh, on this way, yes, yeah, sure. But um, I never felt um, being threatened in, in, in real life. That's good. That's good to hear because I think that's one fear for many, you know, so to speak, closet ex-Muslims. I think there's a lot of Muslims out there who don't believe in the religion, who who, yeah. who don't want to believe in the stuff that their parents taught them. Yeah, but yeah. They're actually scared to actually say, exactly. Exactly. I don't believe in this. That's a big topic. Uh, do, do you think that, ha, had you remained Muslim, do you think that you would have the political views you do now or have the vegan views that you do now? Or do you think you would just be very much stuck in that religious and you wouldn't have changed your ideas in other areas at all? 
Ah, you mean uh, leaving Islam was a door opener for um, exploring new ideas and philosophies? Maybe, yeah. So if you were still Muslim now, hypothetically, do you think, what do you think your political views would be? What do you think your views on animal rights would be? It would be com a complete another life. You know, I would be married by now. I had, uh, I would have uh, three children, which maybe is, is, is okay. It's okay. It's a good way to go. But um, I would remain in the Islam. I would remain in the, you know, in the mainstream um, way to go to life. Nine to five job. I w I'm an engineer, you know, uh, for railways. Yeah. So right. I would uh, um, fulfill this job, and um, it would be uh, a really normal life, you know. And that's yeah. that's not what I wanted to choose for myself. So um, as I um, get to manage um, leaving Islam, I think um, it, yeah, sure, it, it it pushes you in a in a in in a um, um, hole. Where you don't yeah. know uh, where to go, you know, because this was this was the philosophy uh, taught by your parents, and this was right. the way to go. So now you're on your own. You have to think about everything on your own. So uh, it, it's yeah. it's a blessing and it's a curse, you know. Ignorance is also ca can also be a blessing, yeah. uh, and um, uh, knowledge and uh, consciousness can be a curse because you have to think about everything in life. So, um, but I got to I got it. I got to hand it to you. Leaving Islam was not as big uh, a, 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 the turning point in my life as veganism was. Veganism right. was the bigger turning point in my life. And I'm really grateful for that. Well, I think that's the perfect segue for us to get into that. So tell us your vegan story. So you were always someone who was skeptical of veganism and then yes. boom, something happened. What what happened? Yeah, I was I was uh, skeptical, but not from um, the emotional uh, point of view, because emotionally, I think we all can get it that it, it's it's cruel, it's it's um, it's uh, it's um, the lack of empathy, not to um, not to f uh, feel like we have to save animals, you know. Yeah. So this would this would be the emotional part, but um, other than that, we have the logical, rational uh, part of arguments on that and on the arguments level i got um, a lot of questions and i used to have um, vegans in my in my social environment and uh, my social circle but uh, they would also would always um um uh, dodge the debate about that you know right yeah, they, they don't want to they don't want to argue about that they cannot uh, stay it uh, emotionally they cannot maybe they don't have they have the lack of words to um to say how it is has to be say the, the arguments you know the right arguments maybe also they are just not um so intellectual and cannot um get it on their own on the argument level on the rational level you know yeah. so um it was about 10 years of uh, I was always thinking about that. I was always thinking about that. And then um, there was an opportunity. Rafaela, I, I used to uh, follow her since um, summer 22. And uh, yep. she um, challenged a, a colleague of mine, also in the right wing area of politics. And right. they, de they de debated about it. And uh, this uh, discussion just wouldn't let me go off. And uh, I was thinking about that. Two, two, three days, and then I decided to okay, I'm gonna make a video, uh, uh, a reply against Rafaela. I'm gonna sit sit down and uh, get all her arguments and uh, debunk them. And I, right. I started to. I, I, I'm swear, I'm being honest on that point. I still have the uh, arguments against her. You know, I have a script. <laughs> I have a script. Yeah. So that's I, historic. Uh, I like that. You've got that saved somewhere. That's a piece of history. Sure, sure. And there is also the the date uh, written on it. You know, twenty one, twenty uh, first uh, November, twenty two. Right. So I started yeah. to, and I, I had this uh, debate, uh, this 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 process of thinking about it, and uh, in the process of making this video and writing down the arguments of uh, pro and contra, I uh, some at some point I asked okay myself okay uh, what do I got what she what 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 does she have, and it, it doesn't look good for me. That's something I can I can admit to myself. I right. don't have to publish it. I don't have to um, um, shout it out loud for the whole whole world. But that's that's the, the status of um, this um, yeah this uh, research on this point. 
And um, then I catch myself asking my, uh, myself um, uh, the, the following question. And this, I think this is a really powerful question because it, ca it can um, detect if you have, if you have um, I call it fear of insight. Fear, you, you get them, you get this word. You, so you are, you are maybe a feared of um, getting something new to know in life. Fear of right. insight. In Germany, I, in German, I call it uh, Erkenntnisangst. So um, uh, the following question is, uh, what, what if she's right? What would happen? Yeah. So, so put yourself in this position uh, that you can, that you imagine maybe she's right. So what would happen? And th this uh, question helped me to um, detect um, my, yeah, my real fears. And, um, and after that, all my arguments, my lack of arguments uh, just uh, break down like a house of cards. Wow. And, uh, yeah. yeah. I went vegan. I still made the video. I publish it, but yeah. with the plot twist, with the turning out, then I'm vegan now. Yeah. <laughs> That's interesting. Um, and how how did you come across Rafaela? For anyone who doesn't know of uh, who we're talking about when we mention Rafaela, by the way, it's uh, the Militante Veganerin or the Militant yes. Vegan in English. So um, she is huge in the German speaking world. She's basically a celebrity there. She has to put on a disguise to even leave the house, she told me um and she, she she'll she'll be watching back today i'm sure i saw her in the live chat beforehand H how did you come across her content how did you two cross paths uh how did i met her you know yeah. what you mean? i yeah. think the first videos was um like on tiktok and right. this was uh, like mocking on mocking on her you know was more troll and trash content on her wow so this was uh, and this catch my um how you got my my, my uh, audacity uh, and, um, and my attention. Yeah. Um, so um, there is something going on there. There is a girl. She's not normal. Rafaela sure is not normal. She is, uh, sticks out of the mass, you know. So yeah. uh, so and and you know, um, uh, despite of being vegan or non-vegan, there are also other people who are not not not, not normal in my um, in my political area, you know. And I, I noticed that those people um, always inspires me. You know, Th those people um, inspires me who who stick out of the mass, who yes. go other ways. You know, who, who explore new paths. And um, that's when I uh, detected uh, what um, get which per people and which persons will get my respect. And that's are always the, those who uh, needs courage to do this, what they're doing, you know, courage yeah. uh, gets my respect. Yeah. So even before you were vegan, you kind of secretly had like maybe a certain admiration for vegan activists who kind of were brave and, and were kind of sticking out from the crowd in that, in that regard, you had that kind of respect there for them still. Yeah, it must be uh, 2010. So 14 yeah. years ago, I noticed the first time I, uh, Gary Yurovsky. Yes. And amazing. now now I know his name, but I remembered yeah. him. Uh, I know this bald guy. He always uh, talk really emotional and uh, gets deep down in it. And uh, it was I think it was the famous um the famous um uh, lecture he did on the on the students uh Place, you know? you'll ever hear it's called yeah 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 i think i uh, not, used to notice it uh, back then and yeah. um but it wasn't it wasn't there wasn't many uh, vegan activists you know so i yeah. used to know uh, some vegans and i get the message i understand why they're do doing it but uh, it wasn't inspiring enough because either they're making compromises so it's my personal choice you can do whatever you want Right, or or they're just uh, closing up the topic and uh, are not able to discuss about it, you know. And it doesn't help me to uh, dive into the uh, uh, in their point of view. And how shocking was it for your fan base, sort of that anti woke crowd that you're that you've garnered over the years, who 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 love you for your political opinions and for smashing kind of. SJW woke culture, all that kind of stuff. What was the reaction like when you announced that you had gone vegan to them? Yeah, we, we have one reaction right here. Someone says um, in the comments, um, I, "I took the I took the wrong turn." 
<laughs> so uh, right. I'm wrong. I'm wrong in it. Or uh, other people say uh, I fall for for uh, empathy. You know, there is no rational argument. It's all uh, only empathy. And as I think about it, even if it only would be empathy, it wouldn't be a uh, a bad thing. You know, mm -hmm. being a, a, um, empathically or how we would call empathetic. It? Yeah, yeah. Empathetic um, is not a bad thing. <laughs> you know, no. <laughs> why, why would we shame that? Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, first of all, this and. Lots of other straw men, uh, straw men um, on 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 this topic, um, which hit me, but um, less of people. But where we few who get the message, and um, some of them uh, was uh, vegan uh, before me, and those who were vegan before me in my uh, in my um, um, crowd in my. Um, mm, you know the people who your audience yeah yeah um they uh, they they told me Ferros, i i knew it uh, you would when uh, you would uh, go vegan at some point there was oh you mean like the people closer to you maybe the, the no 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 the people who was following me and uh, look watch my videos for years and were, oh, were vegan they were vegan and they t yeah. told me it's no wonder uh, that you you're vegan because it fits in your um uh, yeah, in your philosophy of life. Because you're always wanting to know the truth is the thing. You're, first you're of all this, truth. first of all this, and the, yeah. and the second insight I got uh, last year on myself, that was the biggest insight on myself, was that I'm not fighting for interests or I'm yeah. fighting for um, lobbies. I'm fighting for justice. So, yeah, and it, even then, and especially then, um, or even then when it's not um, positive for me, you know, but if it's the right thing to do, it, it's it's the the way to go. Yeah. Do you consider yourself right wing or are you just anti woke? Like, how do you consider yourself? Uh, in Germany, we have another case. You know, Germany sticks out of out of this uh, in this topic um, right. in the international comparison because Germany has a special history. So this comes along, and um, I would say I have uh, many uh, right wing positions. Yeah. Um, I have also uh, maybe I have um, left wing uh, positions, or sure. you can you can not always um, fit into the uh, right uh, left um, system. Maybe yeah. it's some, sometimes it's between liberal and conservative. You know, I have yeah. some conservatives, I have some liberal um, um, views. Views, but um, yeah. yeah, I would say I just think about the things, um, uh, not dependent on which way to go in politics, you know? I think about them ethically, yeah. and then I can see where does it fit. So what, what would you consider? Veganism is, is a left wing, is a right uh, wing uh, topic. Some, some, some people say it's a, uh, it's a right point of view, but what, what would, you, you, would you consider veganism as in the political system? For me, it's neither. I'm very open about, I, I, I've done a lot of videos about this and, and posts and stuff. For me, it's just like a politically and religiously secular movement. It's a moral obligation. Um, just as we would say that leaving children alone, you're not. It's not a left wing view or a right wing yeah. view. It's a. It's neither a left wing or a right wing view to leave animals alone. Which is why I get so pissed off at the amount of intersectional leftists in the animal rights movement who say falsely that veganism is a left wing movement. When left-wing people the world over are oppressing animals, like it's yeah. a massive insult to animals but, to say this. But you could hand them, hand it to them that um, the most vegans are at home in the leftist sphere. Could we say that? Well, here's one th maybe observation I've made recently. Um, most vegans, yeah, identify as left politically. However, there's a problem here because most people who say they're vegan, in my opinion, aren't even vegan. Uh, that's right. And when a lot of these left wing vegans who are massively intersectional, what they tend to I, I don't consider the vast majority of those to be vegan anyway. Yeah. They um, they constantly put human rights issues over animal rights issues. They put animal rights on the back burner and. What, the funny thing I say, Firoz, about the intersectionals, 
I know you've done these table debates with this. George, whole, whole... George, just just sorry to interrupt you, but uh, sure. not to get this wrong. Um, how, why don't you consider them as vegan? Because they have other topics which which are more important, or do you think they don't live it uh, consequently? I think it kind of ha both happens. So okay. what will happen is well, well. First start, let me just um, correct that first bit. It's not that I think they're not vegan because they think other things are more important. It's because they specifically screw over the animals and put them on the back burner. We see this every time a current thing comes along. What they'll do is they act in a way, they treat the animal rights movement in a way they wouldn't treat other movements, okay? Yeah. Um, so, for example, with the BLM hysteria in 2020, yeah. They were post. They were telling animal rights pages, "Why are you posting animal rights content today? You should be posting hashtag Blackout Tuesday. You shouldn't yeah. be posting today." It's like, so yeah. would you ever tell? You know, would you ever tell uh, the racial justice movement, "How dare you post about racism today? Yeah. You need to post about the rights of guinea pigs today because a guinea pig died last week." They would never do that. So they can. <laughs> Go on. I think I wouldn't go so far to say they're not they're not vegans, but they have their their maybe their um, priorities a little bit uh, turn over because uh, th I got the same issue on, on that uh, too. People uh, attacking me or attacking Rafaela for talking to me or for hanging out yeah. with me, um, even if we are uh, doing uh, vegan activism, act animal act rights activism together. Yeah. Yeah. So um, only because I vote for the wrong party, you know, and yeah. if I vote for the wrong party, uh, there is no cooperation with him. So they're putting um, uh, voting for the wrong party, which stays no uh, in no relationship to uh, yeah. slaughtering animals uh, in, in uh, over slaughtering animals, you know. So I think they, they can be vegan, too. I think vegan veganism. Is, is is a is a um, right definition you know you you respect animal rights well let me tell you why i think those people by and large aren't vegan because mm -hmm. those people are actively harming animals if you turn up feroz to an activism event and they say oh look it's feroz khan get him out of here what they're doing is they're saying to the animals screw you animals we don't care about like how many people are representing you today we want the movement to be as small as possible and we're going to hijack it to suit our political agenda i what get they're it. All, I get it. yeah and what they're ultimately saying for us is they don't genuinely care about animal exploitation a lot of these people are just narcissists and yeah. if you look at, uh, at studies in social psychology narcissists are drawn towards social justice movements because it gives them the chance to grandstand above others so i think a lot of these people are fake vegans and i think it does manifest into their purchasing habits but george, I but george, but george sure. sorry sorry um this is the same thing uh, many people would say about us too right My, my, yeah, but my they're wrong because we're vegan. We, but I wouldn't turn someone away from an activist event because of like okay. I'm I'm legit. Like they 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 might say, "Oh, George or Feroz isn't vegan because they don't tick this political box." But I would just say that's a stupid argument because no, we I'm are saying legit. I'm saying they would say uh, many people would say we are narcissists because we are fighting for justice in a really ideological way, you know. Oh, yeah, sure. But those people would, would just be wrong. They're, they'll just be categorically wrong on that. Whereas I think studies show that um, these types of people, the woke crowd, they often don't care about these issues. Yeah. And they genuinely, and we, we're seeing this. Th this is anecdotal. But a lot of these ex-vegans that I'm seeing recently, you know, being exposed on Instagram and Facebook and stuff like that, they were these super woke people who, mm. who used to... Um, who used to say, you know, and this is why I basically call intersectionals future ex-vegans. Because if you're posting, if you're telling Anonymous for the Voiceless, don't post about animals today, post about George Floyd. Yeah, yeah, yeah sure. that person's a future ex-vegan in the making. They're not, they're not going to be vegan for sure, long. They sure. don't care. Like, That's imagine, the wrong message. Exactly. Ima imagine, imagine thinking that animal oppression is that insignificant that you would post instead, you would demand animal rights yeah, pages to sure. post instead about a, a dead animal oppressor. 
yeah. on that day. Yeah, and they, <laughs> and they wouldn't do this with any other movement, which is why I call these people. This is the funny irony for us. These people are the all lives matter people of the animal <laughs> rights movement. They're the very people they oh, condemn. <laughs> Yeah, but but you know, I gotta change my mind on all lives matter. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And in, in in the retrospective, um, two people commented in in this change my mind uh, section and the yeah. commentary. Uh, Pharaohs, if you're for all lives, you should be vegan. And it was 2020. It was yeah. four years ago. So um, I I ha had this in my my, my um, in my mind. Didn't forget it. And they were right. They were right. I think um, all lives matter. Yeah, because um, I, I, I'm just a, I'm just an um, um, opponent of mixing those um, those um, topics. You know, we have we have not only uh, we have a big issue on on um, animal uh, and slavery, but yeah. that's not the only. Um, 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 uh, in Germany, we say Baustelle, uh, meaning uh, that the, the, the spot where people um, work, <laughs> road working, you know, road works. Right. And, yeah. So we have many problems on earth. We have many. Not, it's not the, not the only one. And um, I'm just being cautious about your um, about your uh, saying, because you're really close on, uh, you know, the, uh, the, the straw man of um, not the real Scotsman. Argument? Oh, no true Scotsman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No true Scotsman. Yeah, yeah. It, yeah. It, it could, it could, it could lead into that. You know, there is a slippery slope where you say, okay, he is not vegan. He's not vegan. I know this. I only, I only know this from my time in in Islam. They say this is not a Muslim. Yeah, this yeah. is not a Muslim. Uh, only those people are Muslim who fits my uh, idea of you. You know, uh, we got to be cautious about that. Just, just reminding you. Yeah. Well. I think I'm going to do a video on this soon about the whole no true Scotsman thing. But I think I'm actually going to focus it more on the idea that there is no such thing as an ex-vegan is allegedly a no true Scotsman fallacy. Now, I get taught because I think there is no such thing as an ex-vegan. I do think that these people were never truly. They never yeah, I the think this too, but uh, it's more empirically. Yeah. Yeah, but people would say to me, well, George, you're committing a no true Scotsman fallacy there, right? Now, here's why I don't think it's a no true Scotsman fallacy to say that there's no such thing as an ex-vegan. With the no true Scotsman fallacy, the scenario used in the no true Scotsman fa fallacy, it's just over something arbitrary as nationality. And anyone mm -hmm. can be the certain yeah. nationality like yeah. you know people will say Ferraz, you're not really german because <laughs> yeah. you're a pakistani background right when you are german right that's a no true scotsman I'm a, I'm a true scotsman right there you go. <laughs> right so in the uh in the example of what a no true scotsman fallacy is i think there's two scotsmen and they're eating porridge or something and hamish says to you know douglas or whatever his name is um uh you know well uh Scotsmen don't eat sugar in their porridge. And then Hamish says, well, I'm a Scotsman and I eat sugar in my porridge. And then Douglas slams his fist on the table and he says, well, no true Scotsman eats sugar in their <laughs> porridge or something like that, right? Now, that's a no true Scotsman because it's something as silly and arbitrary as your nationality, right? You can you you can be uh, uh, anything and be a Scotsman as long as you have a British passport and were born in Scotland, right? You're a, you're a Scotsman, right? Now, with the whole vegan thing, this is a totally non-arbitrary thing. This is a very, very, very serious non-arbitrary thing. So for me, the equivalent of someone saying, oh, I used to be vegan, but then, right? That's like someone saying, Firoz, I used to be a pacifist, but then someone looked at me the wrong way in the street, so I decapitated them. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Like, no, and this is a, like... And this is literally what's happening to animals in the slaughterhouses. They're getting their heads hacked off. You can't just be vegan and then you go to hacking sentient beings' heads off. Like sure. that, that sounds as ridiculous as someone saying, I was a pacifist, but then I cut someone's head off. Sorry, bro, you weren't ever a pacifist. If all it took for you to stop being a pacifist was someone looking at you the wrong way in the street, you were never a pacifist. You were just saying you were. You never yeah. felt it in your heart. You know. I get your point. 
I get your point. Uh, you could you could put it on Islam, uh, for example. There are some some cases you can uh, you can argue about it. Is this Muslim? Is this not Muslim? Is this uh, that some, some some rules? You know. So um, uh, and and uh, you know on the vegan uh, philosophy, we also vegan uh, uh, philosophers uh, fight about it. You know, we, yeah. we argue about it. Uh, some some things maybe don't know about bugs and something like that. And, and uh, so, um, 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 I, I, I'm just I'm just cautious. I'm just, just trying to um, make it uh, for you to understand why I'm so cautious, because I think um, I, I always meet people uh, who are uh, who who says claims to be ex vegans. They used mm -hmm. to be vegans, so yeah. I'm I'm really uh, interested in, in knowing what happened, and uh, why is that? Yeah. Because I'm I, I'm gonna be cautious on that that it doesn't happen to me, and in the most cases, my uh, conclusion on the on this is they weren't vegan. They was just eating plant based or so other other reasons. You know, they didn't yeah. get the message. If if, it if they would have get the message got the message, they would still be vegans. That's also my um, conclusion, but it's empirically. And um, <laughs> this week I was really thinking hard on this topic and I come to the um, result that um, we should be cautious about um, about um, uh, pointing with a finger on others, you know, not about uh, condemn condemning people. So that's what we usually do uh, if we uh, hear about something who is someone who is um, who is uh, torturing animals. Sure, yeah. we condemning as well as we do it with uh, pedophile predators, you know. So uh, there's the same thing. Sure, we condemn it, but um, in in um, um, considering ourselves and our our own um, uh, understanding of of uh, how the people, how the society works, I don't. I I'm cautious about uh, condemning because I'm 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 not gonna try to understand the opposition better than the opposition itself. I, I, I try to understand my opponent better than he, himself. And it's an it's oh, yes. advantage for me. It's not an advantage for him. It's an advantage for me. And yeah. when I think about it, uh, how we can um, deliver the message, the vegan message more efficiently, more effective, we have to understand that. We have to understand the, the, the opponent The only we, when we understand the opponent, we can reach him. Only we can, when we reach him, we can convince him, you know? So that's my thinking on it. As the Rage Against the Machine song goes, know your enemy. Well, um, I, I've been, um, I've done lots of videos now and work on finding out how the hell this happens, ex-vegans, because this is always something that just bewildered me. But I do think now that narcissism is probably the key factor with those people that you assumed were legit activists. I'm not talking about the majority of people who go, vegan who are just plant-based people who do veganuary whatever those those obviously like those are no surprise right um but i'm the legit activists who one day you see a post on facebook i'm no longer vegan it's like but i stood with you outside the slaughterhouse and i was <laughs> i was an av volunteer with you and i yeah, did yeah. this with you and they're like those people i think those people are those narcissists that those study were talking about. And I genuinely believe those people would never genuinely cared about animals. They were just very good at, perhaps they even convinced themselves to care about animals to be legit. So they can just grandstand above other people. So they can say, um, that's I'm, yeah, yeah, I'm vegan. I'm above you. Yeah. Then when the next thing comes along, when they get bored of animal rights, then they'll just choose a different issue to grandstand above other people. I think I think maybe, George, we have to be honest with ourselves. And I uh, caught, caught myself uh, when I went vegan. Uh, since then, no day pass. I'm not thinking about this topic. You know, every day I think about veganism. And yeah. um, I... I found out that there is a um, that there is not one or two motives going vegan or being vegan there are a, a bunch of uh, motives and motivations we went vegan and um, especially i was thinking about myself personally and uh, i think it's it's a whole pyramid you know a pyramid so there is a, is a it's a it's a um, top point and there yeah. is a whole another bunch of uh, motives uh, being vegan and i think 
what, what you called just what you just mentioned would be profiling profiling so i'm other than the other i'm better than the other so um yeah. i think i think it's a normal it's a, a natural natural instinct of humans uh, for some more for the other less to stick out of the mass you know some have are more eccentrically other one don't want to be uh, exposed to the public so they stay in the mass um yeah i think um i wouldn't ju judge someone who who would be who would who can admit that he has a um uh, um a calling to profiling himself and be other than the others um yeah but if it would only be this motive it's it's critical if if it's only about uh, being better better than the other or putting himself above the others or um looking for a reason to um uh, cut the society so this would be wouldn't be a, a, a um a good reason or motive to attend or join veganism yeah i want to get your opinion now as an ex muslim who was not vegan to someone who Sorry, a Muslim who was not vegan to now an ex-Muslim who is vegan. On how we talk to Muslims about animal rights, because that is something that I think every vegan finds very sure. Tough. Sure, um, it's a, it's a it's an issue in uh, UK and Germany especially, right? <laughs> oh God, well, um, I, Pakistanis are actually one of our most sure. popular migrant groups here. Sure. Indians and Pakistanis, and, yeah. Yes, and I believe the most common muslims in germany and maybe turks right turks and um, meanwhile syrians right and when you speak to um muslims on the streets for that they can be th that ethnicity or any ethnicity yeah, it's sure, just muslims sure. in general when you're speaking to them on the street doing outreach it's like talking to a brick wall 99 of the time because they have it in their head that god put these animals here for us to yeah, eat sure, sure. who are you you know my cre who are who are you to tell me what is right when my creator has told me what it's written in, in his book yeah yeah so how how do we get through to them what how, think, how can we do it i think in 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 all the all considering all considering all arguments i think it's um important to stay in your own frame so you don't uh get, get on his philosophy you know um and it it's also a fallacy to say it's written in my book it's written in my book is a, is a fallacy you know uh, religion cannot be an argument for nothing and uh, you can prove that if uh, by asking him if what if in your book would be uh, written uh, you have to enslave um, chinese people would you do that would you tolerate that and they the, mostly they say no i wouldn't so that's interesting because from my experience they would either just get uncomfortable with such a question sure, or, and not answer it, or they would just say, sure, if that's what Allah has said, then yes, we there would is do no... that because the, 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 it's the will of Allah, so sure. that's what we do. And then you have no, if he says yes, <laughs> then you have no um, base on negotiation on this point anymore. Yeah. What, 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 what can you say about that? He, he, would, he would do everything was written in his book. He was decapitated decap decap you. If it's written in its book, so I we think see this. we see this in Muslim countries. They literally will cut people's heads off because of something. Yeah, sure, sure. <laughs> That's a special <laughs> case of Islam, but I, I think um, there is no uh, need to uh, compromise with religions in this uh, in this uh, topic. Um, and um, but but uh, if you have knowledge of the religion, it's good to know. So I come from the Islam. I know some things about the, uh, the Islam, the philosophy, uh, and um, it's uh, good to know. But I wouldn't uh, use it. I wouldn't use it in a, a vegan ar argument. Yeah. Yeah, because what I tend to do in such conversations on the street is maybe the thing that you're actually saying not to do. I actually try to get through to them from an Islamic context about why to be vegan. So I will actually mention <laughs> about things in the Quran and no, the Hadith. That doesn't, that doesn't work, George. That doesn't work. They have a holy <laughs> festival. They, they have a holy festival uh, decapitating uh, lambs. Yeah. You know? so. but, but that's where I bring in the Hadith that said um, 
a man actually spares the life of a lamb he was about to murder for for sacrifice and he says and then the prophet mahanu tells the man because you have spared the life of this sheep allah will spare you twice on the day of judgment yeah, and there's, then you're in his frame then you in your his you're in his frame and maybe he'll know a bunch of other hadiths uh, which yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> contradicts that i i think uh, you're going to lose it if you go in on his uh, on his view because especially in islam for 100% it's proven it's proven uh, you can be you can be a muslim as a uh, vegan as a muslim that, that, that's also no contradiction because you don't have to um, uh, decapitate a lamb. You can also um, uh, sacrifice money, money, and give it to poor people. So this is the original origin. But but right. those but those who want to um, lead uh, or follow the written rule, they are allowed to uh, kill uh, the lamb. At least the lamp. It's not only the lamp. It's a whole lot of other things. Uh, yeah. Pigs uh, got luck in Islam, but uh, on the other hand, they, they they're not so lucky because they're um, treated not good in in uh, Islamic world. You know, pigs pigs are not allowed and no. uh, haram. And um, but and and it, there was some hadith about uh, the devil living in the black dog, and the, you you cannot you cannot you, you cannot win this. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, that's funny because is it specifically black dogs that Muslims have a real problem with? The devil can be living can be living in the uh, black dog. It's uh, called a hadith. Okay, that's interesting because I now I can recall two times from my life. Okay, so when I was growing up, we had this dog called Lucky. He was a black Labrador, mm. and I remember one time a Muslim girl came around my house, and. She walked in through the kitchen. She was a school friend of mine. She walked in the kitchen and Lucky was there. Her back, she was literally against the wall like that. He was the most like docile dog ever. He was a beautiful, lovely boy. He was just sat there like wagging his tail. She was literally, her back was like against the wall. She was like, can you like get him out of the room so I can move past? And I was like, it's not going to turn this. It's like, I can't, I can't like go near him. Another time. She, she um, was a Muslim. She was a Muslim. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And and another time she was a Pakistani Muslim, as it happens. And um, another time, we had ordered um, an Indian takeaway. My family had this was a few years later. And in the UK, the vast majority of Indian restaurants are actually run by Bangladeshi Muslims, not by Indians. Okay. And the delivery driver came to the door. And uh, Lucky was like at the front door with me, like greeting him almost as I took the order. And again, the guy was like, he looked terrified. He was like, no, 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 no. He was going. It, but, is that specifically, is that because he was a dog or is it because he was a black dog specifically? Nah, it could be, it could be both. It could be could both. Be both. Yeah. I was just yeah. going to mention it. Uh, it could be because Muslims have a uh, uh, common fear of uh, dogs. Yeah, that's... Uh, yeah, that's also um, not getting better because they don't treat uh, dogs in the Arabic world really good. Yeah. So they bite and bark back, and uh, they yeah, yeah. they they um, yeah amplifies the fear <laughs> of the humans of dogs. Right. Yeah, I, I have seen horrific treatment of dogs in Muslim countries or on YouTube and stuff like that. But um, yeah. I mean, even that surely that violates the Quran and the Hadith because talks about how a prostitute was do doomed to hell yeah, and then she she gave the thirsty dog some water and Allah spared yeah. her gave her heaven yeah, yeah. She, and she went right up to the dog and gave the dog water i know i heard about it but uh, as i mentioned this is a um islamic theological um discussion it's also interesting but you cannot win it uh, against uh, and in this frame you cannot um uh, convince a muslim to go vegan it's about the vegan message and there is no compromise on that yeah yeah and i'm wondering now about your your childhood and stuff growing up like did you experience any like racism or anti-muslim rhetoric growing up from like i don't know if you grew up in a predominantly like white school or like a non-muslim school or anything like that talk to us about uh, have you faced any discrimination maybe when you were younger not at all. I grew up in Frankfurt. Yeah. Frankfurt is uh, the most multicultural uh, town in Germany. And it yeah. used to be in the 90s too. 
So in my class, uh, I was we were always maybe there was um, were twenty five uh, children and yeah. um, maybe five to ten Germans, you know. But the Germans right. they were real straight clean cut Germans like Sebastian and Benjamin and real clean cut Germans. And yeah. you have the other section, and it wasn't like we have Germans and we have Muslims. So in the 90s in Frankfurt, I don't know what happened, but in the 90s in Frankfurt, it was like we had Russians, we had um, we had Indians, we had Turks, we had black, uh, I, I remember twin siblings, you know, a yeah. girl and a boy was black. Um, the boy got downhill later, but that's another, uh, another story. Right. Um, we were really like the term of multiculturalism that's what i imagine on uh, think about when i think about multiculturalism so nowadays we only have uh, muslims and uh, germans and i cannot remember from a childhood any any situation i got um i got harassed or, or, or treated uh, racial r racist um i think in my later in my youth when i started uh, to work after school and uh, studied bachelor yeah. i always had the feeling that i'm a little bit advantaged because they want to be uh they want to be colorful you know, how you call it uh we want to be diverse uh, yeah diverse. yeah yeah exactly. <laughs> diversity is our strength so we need this we need this brown guy you know yeah so i never had to uh, and maybe i i um managed to i had uh, some some um, encounterings in eastern germany but yeah. i never allowed it to uh, letting me down you know it's so, interesting because it what you say there is so relevant to my kind of experiences in the animal rights movement we keep hearing about white privilege this white men this racism this racism that white supremacy white supremacy in animal rights white supremacy in veganism all i've heard in veganism is white people being shit on and everyone else, all the other races are the, like, are the privileged ones who get nothing. Yeah. There's no, like, I haven't seen any racism towards non-white people in the animal rights community. It's just George Martin is a cis white male <laughs> scum. Dyson's <laughs> kill all cis white male hey, shit. I got to hand it to you, uh, George. Um, we had uh, we had some issues with me in the, in the animal uh, rights movement, you know, in Germany. So yeah. I was I was attending uh, animal um, anonymous for the voiceless in Hamburg in Berlin in Vienna and we had some they had some problems because I come from the right wing area in the right wing corner so um, they they they're publishing the, the the photo of us and all, all of them are white you know all white everything except me and they're uh, they're publishing this uh, picture with uh, with the um, with the uh, offense of uh, th there is a right winger in, in, in this group. <laughs> you, you show it on the street. A anyone, you know, guess who, 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 who's uh, called a Nazi in this group? <laughs> you know? oh my it's, God. It, it's yeah. ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Yeah, it's true. Uh, we're welcomed. Uh, but I noticed too uh, uh, that the animal rights movement is not really, really diverse, you know. Uh, if it comes to that point, hmm. uh, yeah, uh, in well, Australia, yeah. in Australia, I, I was in Australia, in Sydney, and uh, in Melbourne, and I attended their uh, animal rights movement too. And there was uh, many uh, Indians, Indians, and um, also uh, East yeah. Asians. Uh, but yeah. uh, it was another topic. But in Germany, mostly are white. Yeah, that's interesting, and I think maybe religion plays a part of that because i think white people are less likely to be religious and so in germany i think the fact that you see the activism scene being so predominantly white there i mean for example well, for a start obviously germany is a white majority country so it's just going to turn <laughs> out like that anyway but if you're saying it's so overwhelmingly white in the activism scene there whereas in australia maybe not so that must be to do with the immigrant groups and their adherence to certain religions. So, for example, if you're mentioning, so maybe Australia has quite a high, like Indian immigrant population or something, yeah, sure. Chinese and Japanese. Yeah. And I think they're less likely to be religiously dogmatic and then therefore they're more open to veganism. The main <laughs> non white groups in Germany would be what you're saying, Turks and, and, and groups like that. Yeah. And they're more likely that they're very likely to be Muslim. Sure. And as we're talking a moment ago, that's right. 
it's That's very right. hard to get Muslims but, to but in. there is hope there is hope uh, um i know that um uh, rafaela is attending um animal rights uh, activism in in uh, frankfurt uh, last time more and uh, there are many muslims you know where i come from muslims and and there are people with headscarf and muslims you know and uh, t turkish uh, guys and girls who are vegan and they are, it's it's yeah. good to see that they don't make any compromise they don't mix this uh, uh, mix this or try to um, make an another uh, philosophy about it uh, the muslim vegans or something like that it's just vegans they're just vegans and vegans come comes in all colors and <laughs> how how we, how left to say that in all colors and genders you know <laughs> just, I, that's that's um, what i um, noticed in uh, australia in february i was uh, the whole month in um, sydney in australia and um, i just uh, see that um, The vegans on the on one side are all the same internationally. Those who yeah. really get the message, you know, those who are ethically ve vegans, not for lifestyle, not for environment, who really get the message and and the um, the pur the purpose of the message, you know, the the meaning, the main meaning. They're on the one hand, they're the same. On the other hand, I had some outreaches. And the non-vegans are all, all also the same, you know. I heard I heard all the arguments in German Germany, and now I heard them in English in in, in Sydney. The lion, the the, you know, the um, plants uh, feelings, and it's all oh, the same. Yeah. You carnism know, I, is an anti international language for sure. The, exactly, the language uh, of carnism is, is in every culture. And really, it it is it is it is astonishing because I also outreached um, some of uh, my ethnical people, you know, Pakistanis. Yeah. And yep. um, in my family and, and in France, you know, and I try to uh, outreach in, in our language, you know, I speak Urdu, the, the home right. language. Yeah. And um, <laughs> you can be you can be sure that they never have a, a read a book or a, watched a video on, on this topic. N none of that. But also yeah. them have also the lion, the the uh, the farmer in, in South America, the, the ants <laughs> and everything, you know, everything. Everything oh, yeah. it, it's like it's like it's in, intrinsically in the genetics of humans, these non-vegan uh, fallacies. Ah, oh, the the arguments have been raging on since <laughs> lit, since ancient times. I mean, the <laughs> fact that we have like you know you have the old philosophers like Plutarch and uh, and people like that who were talking about animal rights back then and having to talk about essentially debunking the lion arguments you know they're saying that man has no ravenousness and sharpness of teeth as the lion does or yeah, something yeah, like yeah. that it shows they were even facing that that kind of bullshit back then yeah. <laughs> um what are some um tell us more about any backlash you've experienced given who you are in the political sense trying to attend animal rights events and stuff ha, ha, what kind of stuff has happened to you since in being in the animal rights movement from the kind of woke crowd that don't like you. Ah, okay, you're talking about the woke crowd. Yeah. Um, you know, mostly I was with Anonymous for the Voiceless. And Anonymous for the Voiceless are an apolitical uh, movement for animal rights. And that's another topic. It's an interesting question because I have a definition of politics. And politics, uh, um, this would result in the um, conclusion that uh, veganism is not a, a political political topic because yeah. i think politics is always about a negotiation in between humans on human resources on human needs needs and this veganism topic animal rights topic is the one question one just one one time where we're not talking about human needs we're talking about the others who cannot negotiate with us who cannot sit down with us at the table and um, deal with us you know so according to this definition veganism would be out of politics and, and, yeah. and accepted out of politics so um and uh, i i consider av av anonymous of the voices as uh, this type of um uh, animal rights movement so uh, i had um, really less um um conflicts on that i had some some encounters uh, people who was um offending me or yeah had some issues with with my background And um, you know, yeah. I, I mean, I cannot, I can't understand that. You, you know, maybe I, there, there is a whole thinking about that because I think everyone has a has a um, 
boundary on his uh, tolerance level. You know, maybe there are some people who I wouldn't to tolerate as well. You know, on the right side, on the re left side, uh, there was some point I would say, okay, I don't want to be on the on one picture with him. He is has he is a uh, convicted Nazi. He has murdered uh, two, two or three people. He has uh, the, the swastika tattooed on his face. I don't want to be on his, on the photo on, with him. You know, too. You know. I, There's I'm, a line, I'm sure, but you're nowhere near it, and sure, I'm nowhere sure, near sure, it. This sure, is the George, point. It's like George, it's not an every, arbitrary, you know. Exactly, I know, but but everyone has his own reality, you know, and uh, and there are boundaries to the left and to the right too. I have uh, boundaries to the left too. Where someone says uh, hate all Germanies and and kill all Germans or something like that, like anti anti German, anti fas fascist, uh, uh, right wing extremist, yeah, I, I wouldn't be with him too. Not even in a cooperation like uh, we are having now, right now, right? Yeah. So um, on the other hand, a convicted Nazi, there is there is a boundary. I'm just gonna be honest with myself. Um, so I can understand that, but this is the political game, you know. It's about um, attending and um, and uh, yeah, um, fight out suspensions between different ideas. So this is this is a common game in politics. I don't. I never. Um, uh, how would you call uh, call it? Um, beschweren. Uh, I never cared. Uh, cared and uh, never uh, put myself as a victim, you know, on, on this on this point. Yeah, maybe on. I, I know there's some Germans in the comments, so maybe they can help you out with that <laughs> word because I don't sure, know. Sure. But um, ha have you had? Um, have you actually been to an activist event? Complained. Uh, complained. Exactly. Thank you, Oliver. Thank you, Oliver. Um, <laughs> um, have you ever at an activism event? had like an intersectional a woke vegan whatever confront you and say Firoz you're not welcome here mm, no nah, not not so uh, um explicitly yeah but maybe there was some some encounterings which let me g gave me the sign uh not with you, <laughs> you know? there you got the boundaries. message yeah I right mean, right it's okay it's okay i mean in the moment maybe i'm i'm hurt But it's okay. Uh, yeah, you know, Oliver says no. They're only keyboard warriors, so that that's they, they won't say it to you in person, I guess. Yeah, um, yeah, that's and, another and the, point. Yeah, because I what I've heard about Germany is, um, and this is from Oliver and and people in the activism scene. There is, it seems to be quite disjointed these days. Like apparently, like as a way to counter AV. They set up this other outreach group that, with the rip-off name of AV, AV. called Activists for the Victims, and it's uh, AV, and yeah. it's like a it's a group that works the same way as AV, but it's inclusive now. For yeah, us. yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> um, and so it, it's maybe like an intersectional group, but why they've decided to rip off the name like that and the the stuff that just seems very strange to me. Have you encountered those guys before? No, I didn't have any contact to them. Uh, I think they're far away from my uh, from my sphere, and uh, I think their opinion would be really clear, clear uh, on me. And they also uh, put me as an example for uh, AV, uh, the original AV, to be to be right wing or to be whatever whatever it comes. Uh, but I think George, uh, I'm a real big opponent of mixing veganism with other topics you know that's not only because of uh, my uh, situation because of uh, tactical motivation not n n none of that it's because um i think um because i witnessed it you can yeah. be vegan as a leftist you can be vegan as a muslim you can be vegan and i get to learn them uh, internationally they're all the same you know those who get the message are all the same so um right. i would be really really inclusive in, on this point you know not only about uh, genders and and uh, races and and um uh, ages i would be also inclusive on um political views so everyone is welcome everyone is welcome who don't make any compromises on the vegan message you know of course and not only do we see that in the animal rights movement that as long as you get the message it doesn't matter you know what you are we've also seen that anti-vegans come in all from different <laughs> political spheres it's exactly, not just exactly, yeah. yeah 
the, the, because you see the woke people within the vegan movement, they say that right wing. Yeah, how can you expect to advocate to right wing people? They're they, they're never going to go vegan. You know, veganism is clearly a left wing movement because look how the left people go vegan and the right wing people don't. Sorry, but there are so many legit based right wing vegans, and there are the worst scummiest <laughs> anti vegan leftists on earth. Hey. Who are in those like I've heard because I'm white, I've been called colonizer by these woke anti vegans because I advocate um, that everyone should be vegan. Um, I've been told that ra- veganism is racist, it's classist, it's colonialist, it's ableist. I was even telling you just before we went live. Cardiff University here, they were about to enact what's called the plant-based treaty. I don't know if you guys have got the plant-based treaty in Germany yet. No. What's that? So the plant-based treaty is a plan to basically veganize university campuses here. for It's it's for environmental reasons, I guess, rather than Mm -hmm. the animal rights reasons. But um, it's uh, a fair few universities have signed this now, so their cafes only serve plant-based food. So it's, oh, okay, it's, okay, okay. It's, it's good stuff going on at universities here in the UK with regards to that. Cardiff University, from what I heard, actually blocked this from going ahead recently because some woke students, not some right-wing students, some woke students said, no, you can't enact this here at Cardiff University. Why? Because it's ableist and people with eating disorders oh, cannot eat this. Okay. They need to have their milk and their meat and their cheese and their eggs. Otherwise, you're being ableist, right? So it works both ways. Like It comes from the left side, yeah. It always exactly. left me wondering. Yeah, it always leaves me wondering. Uh, because I have a mere idea of right-wingers not getting vegan. If they are in the consequence also... Uh, discriminating i mean there are some people in the right wing section who are discriminating uh, black people so if the, if you would ask him uh, would you enslave also a human people he would maybe say yeah if they're black too yeah sure no problem so it, it would at, at this point it would at least not be um hypocritically you know it wouldn't be yeah. contra- contradiction okay yeah go for it i can't i can um uh, see that point you know but on the left side, on the left side, I was always see Rafaela going to the uh, pride, uh, uh, on the, to the street prides and and uh, CSD and and love parades and so something like that. And they're left people. And they're yeah. covered all in rainbow colors and you know everything, and always white people. That's that's just a neutral um, uh, <laughs> witnessing of my, mine or noticing right. of mine. <laughs> um, and they they come with the with the level zero uh, non vegan arguments too, and it always yeah. leaves me wondering why don't they they, they don't get it? But because they're always against discrimination, against um, hierarchy for mm. empathy, and here they are just as <laughs> as oh. they all are. They say they are. That's the point. And this I actually think these days we te- I, I know I, I know most left wing people are perfectly sensible left wing. Be- Oh shit! What's that? What the hell? My i my iTunes just started playing for no reason. Sorry, must have been a <laughs> command that I said. Um, so I know that most um, left wing people are, are perfectly like sensible people, um, but most bigotry these days, most hatefulness, most discrimination I see actually comes from the left. Um, mm-hmm. We're sit- I mean, I don't know what university campuses are like in Germany right now, but I know in the United States it's got ridiculous. You know, there's these dorms where it's like you have to warn your um, roommates if you're bringing a white person to the dormitories and stuff like that. It's like a war. It's like a red flag. If a white person's coming, you have to really? warn the other. Everyone stays. I-, I just want you to stay calm. I just want you to stay calm. A white person is going to be coming into the kitchen to, okay, okay, we'll prepare. All right, let me mentally prepare. Like, it's got so bad. The bigotry has got so bad in left wing spaces on university campuses um, in America that it's now, it's turned into it. Martin Luther King would be rolling in his grave. It's like a whole violation of his. For sure. For sure. the whole that concept which was supposed to be a left-wing concept yeah, of yeah. every person should be judged by the content of their character not by the the color of their skin yeah miss katie's here in the comments oh no a white person is coming um <laughs> yeah that seems to have just 
been flown out the window. And it tends to be, I think it was Dave Rubin who said this years ago, it's now a right wing principle to defend liberal ideas. <laughs> so it's like yeah. there's been this huge reversal yeah. over yeah. recent years. Yeah, it's, I think it's crazy. So. It's a reverse thing, and uh, it turned. Um, it's putting it upside down, you know. Uh, maybe it, it's uh, just a shifting, you know. It's just a shifting, and um, they think they're fighting back. They're fighting back now. It's their turn right. to revenge, and it's a whole complete wrong thinking. Mm, left alone, uh, the fact that those who really um, Uh, suffered uh, from discrimination and, and slavery are dead by now. And those are not the, the ones who are getting uh, the revenge instead of their uh, grandchildren are getting. Right. So th th left alone that it's, it's even if it would be re revenge would, wouldn't be the solution of the problem. You know, if you, uh, if we have to pro progress in the society, this wouldn't be the way to go. Yeah. Absolutely, because I didn't do anything, dude. I, I was never <laughs> slavery. I, I didn't colonize anyone. Like, like you know, what, what? You know, I, I just heard about it. Uh, 1.6 percent of the whites in America uh, had uh, slaves. You know, the, the majority didn't have any slaves. And right. another historical fact is that the Muslims has more in uh, in whole quantity. They have more slaves uh, in in the past. And they still have slavery in the in the Muslim country. So there is a there is an anti anti white uh, agenda going on in, in the in the Western um, hemisphere. I cannot ignore. And uh, yeah, that's also a reason for me to um, op oppose that. And uh, w w what are you considered as when you oppose this in, in Germany? Sure, you're you're a white uh, right wing uh, extremist, far right uh, extremist. Um, no matter what color you are, if you're Jew, if you're a homosexual lady, no no matter of what, you're a right wing extremist. And yeah, no, absolutely. And, and um, yeah, a, a little etymology lesson as well um, for for people who are wondering. The word slavery actually comes from the oppression yes. of white people. The slaves. It's, yes, I, I'm not approved of it. I've heard about it. I've heard about it, uh, uh, but I've also heard about it that it is not approved. But I'm I'm not sure about sure about it. It, it would make sense because slaves and in Germany, yeah, it would make sense. Yeah, no, it, it, it 100% does come from yes. that. If you look at, yeah, okay. absolutely. Yes, slabs, uh, slaves, slavery comes from the, the, the selling and trading of the slabs slabs. slabs. slabs by Muslim slave traders. In yes. English, it makes more sense because in German, it's uh, Slaven und Sklaven. Yeah. Slavery oh, or right. Sklaven. So there was a K in between. So in English, it even make more sense. Yeah. Yeah, no, absolutely. And, um, Speaking of etymology now, this is actually quite a good segue for um, let's talk about a very controversial term in, in Germany. And you said beforehand you would be willing to, to talk about sure, sure. this. How have your views changed on the use maybe since before you were vegan and now that you're vegan? This is obviously a very serious subject in Germany that can result in legal trouble for comparisons and stuff like that, or undermining, so to speak, of what happened. What do you think of this term like animal holocaust? Like, do you use it in your advocacy? Did you ever think it was crazy when vegans said this before you were vegan? Tell us about your experience of this term animal holocaust. Um, I, I gotta admit uh, that I am not a final, um, finally, um, I don't have a final point of view on, on this topic, you know. Yeah. Uh, and and also, additionally to that, I also have uh, strategically um, thinking about it because in Germany it is illegal, and I'm I'm someone who is um, in the um, suspected of being right wing, extreme right, you know. So right. th this would be this would be the next uh, next step for me uh, for them to um, to abolish me or to to ban me from YouTube. So um, I, I I have both uh, thinking about it. I'm trying to think free about it, and um, I also have to admit uh, that I have a pro I had a progression since I went vegan. I had a progression of uh, different thinkings uh, about animal rights suffering uh, and animal. Uh, 
wild wild animal suffering about yeah. um, uh, the mass industry and i have a progression on that so i'm not final about it but i think there are similarities uh, similarities and uh, are differences between uh, the, the that's what happening now to animals and since a uh, 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 hundred of years and uh, the holocaust in the in the second world war uh, there are similarities and there are differences the question is are there relevant Uh, differences and um, I think the best the best uh, difference the opposite what the opposition could uh, bring up is that the motive was another one so they were uh, killing them because um, they don't they, they want to abolish them from the uh, surface of the earth mm -hmm. uh, here it's about um, they say it's about nutrition it's about whatever you know mm -hmm. in the most cases in the most cases in this in this uh, um, number um yeah you can you could argue about it uh, both are not uh, good arguments for uh, killing someone who is a sentient sentient being absolutely and uh, the number the number of course is a big difference so six million was is the official number um yeah. and uh six million uh, let alone germany we're doing six million in three days On animals, yeah, two yeah. million. So this is a whole another uh, uh, dimension. And in the mm. UK, it's been done in gas chambers. We literally have gas chambers now We in do. the UK. We yeah. do on on pigs. Sure, unbelievable. I mean, the fact that there are gas chambers in Germany Still. when it literally said Still. never again. Those yeah. were the two yeah. words: never That's again. And now Germany sure. literally has gas chambers again. What? For hundred percent, yeah, sure, sure. I can, I can understand that. I can understand it, and um, I think it, it. For some people, it's it's uh, you know it's uh, attaching and um, it's a welcoming argument to think about it. For other people, it's uh, it's um, pushing them away. You know, uh, especially if you uh, put this argument on a Jew, uh, if you outreach a Jew, a Jewish person. So if you bring up the Holocaust, either he, there was there are two uh, options, two opportunities. Yeah. Either he, he will gonna agree with you 100 and will will go vegan instantly, or we will say you're out of your mind. You're putting yeah. animals on the level on you know the whole the whole crap. Yeah. So I think it's a, a tactical in the first place. It's a, a tactical, um, strategically um, yeah. uh, thinking about it. Yeah. I think Jews mainly have actually been the most responsive group to the term. I think so many Jews have actually been, they relate so much to it that they think, oh my God, like I can't believe that. I mean, you're aware of the work of Alex Hershaft, right? Sure. And it was he, it was when he first, he was a, he was inspecting a slaughterhouse in his first job in the United States when he, he moved to the US after the war. Yeah, yeah, and um, he saw the piles of body parts and stuff, and so it, it, it hit him. He was like, "Oh my god, I can't." He said, "Like he, this was he couldn't sleep at night thinking about this. It was just, and he could he even though he was a Holocaust survivor, it was such a like crazy idea to even compare the two things to other people." Even he as a Holocaust survivor felt he couldn't make the comparison at the time. He had to just be quiet about it, even though he went through that stuff himself, even though his family were, was uh, was murdered in Treblinka. Yeah. Um, it, he, even he had to keep it quiet in America. And then he saw the words of Isaac Beshevis Singer one day, who is also Jewish, who said, um, all humans are Nazis to animals. For the animals, it's an eternal trivia, an eternal yeah. trivia. And this is why I say, just just to go on your point a moment ago, the, the counter arguments people bring up. Yeah, so it's not a genocide, which is um, the idea of intent of wiping a group out. So the, 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 the Nazi Holocaust was a genocide and a Holocaust. <laughs> But Holocaust just means slaughter or destruction on a mass scale. So all genocides are holocausts, but not all holocausts are genocides. But nonetheless, they're still both holocausts. Uh, let me let me hand you this, uh, George. This is a good, good point you made. This was uh, ex the exact strategy um, from the colleague of mine who debated uh, Rafaela. He said yeah. it, it would be in a genocide. Uh, I think it would. It, it, it is worse because you force the 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 population to yeah. reproduce themselves. 
in 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 the uh, in the meaning that we can repeat the genocide next year again. Yep. So it's much worse than a genocide. The uh, eternal Treblinka. I, yeah. It's yeah. it's infinite abuse, infinite exactly. oppression, infinite exactly. rape, torture, gassing, suffering. It never ends. So, so the main the main argument of the opponent of uh, uh, Rafaela um, back the other day was um, that uh, this would be genocide. Uh, this would be genocide on uh, animals. So um, if you ask me, if you ask me, if you, if I want to be um, die without children, uh, so I'm 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 gonna die from natural death since yeah. I'm old and in the eighties, or I want to be um, I want to have kids. But uh, I'm gonna be slaughtered. I'm gonna be exploited. My children are gonna be ex slaughtered. Children are gonna be exploited. They yeah. were gonna get away from me. Their uh, faith is the, is the same one. In repeatedly going on. Sure, uh, f of course, I would ch uh, choose the first one. So <laughs> um, it 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 was uh, ridiculous yeah, at this point, you know. Um, and uh, to make the point, it's uh, to be to be. Um, um, on point of, of that, it's worse than genocide because we force them to uh, repeat this eternally. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, lightening the mood a bit and moving on to another subject now, because I, and I appreciate you talking about that because I know what the consequences are like and stuff in Germany for, for even mentioning this stuff, how seriously it's taken. But, uh, but George, but George, I'm I'm really confident on, about this because we can we can we can we have the arguments, you know. So, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, I'm arguing about it, uh, and I'm fighting about it. You can you, you can argue with me about that. So um, I'm I'm really relaxed about on on this on this point. Yeah. Yeah. No. And you're absolutely right in what you say. Um, but nonetheless, yeah. I just wanted to um, ask you now. Moving on to the to a, a, a lighter subject. What kind of things are you eating these days as a vegan? How do you tend to eat? Like, are you one of these whole food plant-based people or do you like to keep it junky and stuff? Yeah, I see you got your... <laughs> my, my protein resource yeah, awesome. uh, for extra uh, 50 gram uh, protein, but that's not only this, sure. Um, I just had a big time pasta <laughs> before we started. Uh, it was really yeah. uh, fatty. Uh, you can... Hey, Yeah, it, it's really it's really ridiculous, you know. Um, I was um, last summer. I was uh, on, on my way with uh, Rafaela. We had uh, some good times together. We had a summer together, and uh, it, it's uh, as you said, as you mentioned, she she cannot go uh, through Vienna, where she originally comes from, uh, 10 meters without uh, little teenagers following her and want right. uh, want a selfie with her. And they all, uh, and um, I uh, said to her, just don't just give them selfies. Ask them first if they are vegan. And the most of yeah. them will, will lie. So the, the most of them will say, "Yeah, I'm vegan." So um, make them to to believe it to you. You know, make them believe it. And uh, pr yeah. you cannot prove it. You cannot prove it being vegan. You can prove being non-vegan, but you cannot prove being vegan. So uh, let them let them make it to you to believe. So uh, ask them what they have uh, for for breakfast. And they and you know they will always come like nothing. Okay, yesterday, yesterday at the at the evening, yeah, I got a bread, only bread, no bread with the salad. You know, right. they, they, they are, I mean, because they don't know, they don't, they they don't have any clue of veganism. They could literally, they could literally say anything: burgers, pastas, uh, even butter. They just add vegan on it because they, they don't know there is everything. There's everything in vegan nowadays. There is a vegan uh, pasta, vegan burger, even vegan pizza, everything, a vegan ice cream, everything. So easy. So so easy. They, they, yeah. they, they, non vegans who have not invested one minute in this topic think we all only eat a salad and bread, you know, and that's it the whole day. <laughs> well, when I was in um, Germany last, it was 2000. And It was 2020. It was like January 2020. And um, you guys had a vegan burger in McDonald's before we did. I yeah. Think you either had the McPlant or something similar. It's cancelled now. Oh, you don't have it anymore. That's no. a shame. That is no. a shame. Because the McPlant, the McPlant's doing quite well here, I think. Um, and then we have, um, you know, bakery chains here like Greg's and the vegan sausage rolls and the vegan steak bakes and stuff are flying off the shelves. They're really, really popular here. So I think mm -hmm. it depends on the. And then obviously, yeah, Subway in Germany. What What's the options like at Subway in Germany right now? No, it is getting a bit better. We have teriyaki plant-based and we had a, yeah. a short time of, of Philly steak 
uh, beef uh, plant based and w this was good other than that we have um um here uh, like pressed pressed um uh vegetables you know uh, yeah. uh it's oh, veggie patty it's called veggie yes. patty yeah yes the veggie okay. patty yeah it's okay you know the funny thing is um the american chain restaurants have like no vegan options in america but then in europe <laughs> they have this other stuff <laughs> my wife's american so I, I, yeah we, we laugh about that because yeah. in the states they don't have them at plant at mcdonald's they don't have any vegan options at subway apparently apparently that even the veggie patty i think in america has like milk in it or something <laughs> like that or egg or something so it's like the easiest place to be vegan at American chain restaurants is outside America. It's yeah. like they say about the best place to have Cuban food apparently is outside of Cuba. Is <laughs> one that funny thing that. Yeah, but America, funny. I think America, the big cities are good for vegans. You know, they're absolutely New York and uh, Los Angeles and um, Sydney was really good for vegans. Uh, yeah. There was the, the first time uh, after years I got uh, to eat uh, meatballs again because there was a restaurant had having uh, vegan meatballs and this was uh, the the one um, Germany in Subway was cancelled you know so I had years chasing meatballs all, all all over the world in Thailand Mexico never had meatballs so in Sydney I got uh, got them finally vegan perfect. Yeah. Uh, and I wanted to mention, uh, as we talked about Jews and uh, Israelis and yeah. the Holocaust, um, Israel has also a high rate, uh, the, the one of the most high, highest rates on um, uh, vegans, you know, 5%, I think so. And yeah. uh, UK and uh, Germany and Australia are one of the top five, two to, two to 5%, depending on where you are. Yeah. Absolutely. No, it, it's really taken off here and in, in Israel as well. And it, it's great to see. Um, I'm just going to read. We're coming towards the end of the stream now, Firoz. I'm just going to read the one super chat I've had. I don't sure. know how familiar you are with this concept. We don't need to debate it now or anything because it could take ages. But uh, it says Firoz should become an antinatalist with your help. Are you aware of antinatalism at all? And have you thought about it? I've heard about it. I'm really thinking hard on it. I'm thinking hard on it. I don't have a final conclusion on this point. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, because um, yeah, I would say read the work of Dr. David Benatar. He's got mm -hmm. a he's got a book called Better Never to Have Been. Mm -hmm. um, it's quite a depressing book. It basically <laughs> it basically lists very very con convincing philosophical arguments about how it's actually better that we never existed in the first place, because all you do when you create a child is create suffering is the only guaranteed thing, and we. We have no need to create well-being from the start. Like a being doesn't miss out on well-being; they only experience suffering, as it were. But what about what about uh, if you uh, include uh, the topic of wild animal suffering? Yeah. So uh, the the human being would be the only one who would have the power to end wild animal suffering. This could be a purpose of life, you know. Maybe this is the re just 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 just. Um, philosophing wildly this could be the purpose of life of animals uh, of humans to end wild animal suffering so what do you think about that yeah this is a common one i have heard recently in response to antinatalism i actually think the opposite is true i actually think um the only the best way to end wild animal suffering is humans not being here because you've seen the movie armageddon maybe back in the day in the case of an astrological disaster that would wipe out the whole of earth humans are the species that would actually stop that whereas me i'm an ethicist and an antinatalist i think all sentient life is a bad thing i i think it's bad that any animal that we exist and suffer in this horrible world if humans are around we would be the species that would not only stop astrological disaster like a huge meteorite that would wipe out earth we would actually move life to other planets and start mm massacring them there breeding them there so the longer humans are around in my opinion is maybe it might actually prolong wild animal suffering um i guess i'm more pessimistic in my outlook than others are yes. what. i do <laughs> want to help wild animal suffering but humans have a very bad track record of helping anything it, we with the oppressor species <laughs> yeah you know this is the practice this is the actual practice this is the now known reality but uh, theoretically, it could be another reality, you know, and we could we could uh, achieve that. And um, 
if you say you're sounding pessimistically to my uh, uh, viewers, you maybe sound a little bit suicidal. <laughs> if you say, if you say you have only suffering, I think um, I have also suffered. Um, suffering is not. Um, if you there are some different type uh, types of suffering, you know, and uh, not every type of suffering is bad. So I go to sports, I suffer, I suffer hard, and I. Um, uh, choose not to eat a food, a fast food and a junk food and only eat vegetables. Maybe I also suffer because it's not so, not so uh, good tasty. So um, not every type of suffering is, is bad. Uh, sure, we can agree uh, if someone else has to suffer for you, it's 100% yeah. not ethic ethically and it's, it's bad. Sure, but um, I would consider myself as lucky. So I had more luck in, in, in life which also feels good you know if you if you have a good life you you um, there are different uh, things in life which feels good it's not only suffering right yeah so well my argument wasn't that there are, there is only suffering we do experience well-being the argument well -being, was that yeah. we have we have no need to create well-being from nothing the only obligation is to prevent suffering from nothing um like yeah uh, I get you. yeah uh, so that was the already uh, livings Exactly. Yeah. If we're already alive, it's good to create well-being. But with a non-existent entity, there's no reason to give. There would be no reason for me to click my finger here and give this speck of dust an orgasm or something yeah. like that. That would be pointless. But if I was to hear that this speck of dust in front of me was about to suffer excruciating pain, I would click my fingers to stop that speck of dust from suffering excruciating pain. And Obviously, the other thing is the suffering th that we cause via procreating, the suffering that our children cause to animals. And unfortunately, you don't even know if your kid will remain vegan. And then sure. their kids, and then their kids, and then their kids, yeah. and then their kids. It's going to, the chain will be broken somewhere I, along the line. I mean, I just want to distinguish here the actual practice from the possible the theory, you know? Yeah. Uh, so it could be a world where where all are vegans. So uh, who's gonna fight for the animals if if not you and me? You know. Yeah. Well, ultimately, uh, you know, it, every vegan animal rights activist you know came came from non-vegan parents anyway. So we mostly. Just, yeah, we should focus our advocacy on changing people who already exist, sure, rather than gamble and create humans. Who we have not, who who could undo our ah, own okay, veganism? Okay. You mean yeah. uh, you you mean uh, there will always be uh, vegans, uh, um, no matter of um, if they're non-vegans, uh, the whole world. Yeah, ninety-nine percent. I I got yeah. your message. I got your message. Um, but uh, then we will remain on two percent. You know, <laughs> maybe <laughs> yeah. we should be more. Uh, I just think procreation would be a very bad and sloppy way and potentially disastrous way to grow the vegan movement when we could just grow it by advocacy and activism sure. towards it's people not, like me and you who were who were non-vegan and are now vegan. Sure, it's <laughs> not my against my tactics against uh, speciesism yeah. uh, create <laughs> create uh, children. Uh, it's yeah, it's an interesting topic. But by the way, yeah, uh, absolutely. Yeah. Um, well, Feroz, thank you so much for the chat. I really appreciate you coming on today. Um, I guess what I'd like you to do now is just to give a message to any of your non-vegan fans watching, the people who know you for your anti-woke political content, who follow you for that. What would your message to those people be about animal rights, about veganism? What would you say to them, Firoz? Well, if you point me on one message, <laughs> it's going to be hard. But i got to hand it to you, George. It was a big pleasure for me too. I really enjoyed it. I, it was a long time ago I had any uh, live stream. But um, uh, then additionally on the top of that on English. But it was good for me. And um, my message uh, for everyone, not only for uh, non-vegans, um, is uh, to always keep your courage to insights on top, you know. Uh, don't let your let the fear of and um, uh, fear of learning new things get over you and always uh, remain on curiosity and uh, to fulfill curiosity is it needs courage you know courage and br braveness so this would be my message awesome thank you so much Piroz. and yeah stay on just stay on the line for a sec Piroz, and we'll say goodbye to everyone but yeah everyone who's tuned in 
Thank you so much for joining us today. And please share on all your platforms and stuff, everyone, if you enjoyed the live stream today. And uh, hopefully, me and Faraz, hopefully this won't be the last of any discussions we have. It would be good to chat to him again. So, yeah. Sure. Thanks, mate. Cheers, guys. Bye-bye. Auf Wiedersehen. <laughs>